Thanks for watching TCA Remote Learning. You can find TCA Remote Learning at tca.org forward slash remote hyphen learning. My name is Miguel Gulen. I'm a Director of Professional Development here at TCEA. You can reach me on Twitter at mglearn. Today's topic is digital choice boards with Google Slides. Have you had the need to create an engaging, student-friendly digital choice board? There are lots of ways to create choice boards, and Google Slides is one of the easiest ways to accomplish that. We're going to do a fast-paced walkthrough uh, that you can watch several times if you need to, and you'll learn how to hide slides that you can link to and create in a sort of a hyper-linked uh, slide deck. So let's uh, take a quick look. Um, at what's here. And by the way, I just want to highlight the address to this particular resource page is ly.tca.org forward slash DCB. If you have any problems reaching that, feel free to reach out and connect with me. So let's do a quick review of Google Slides. Uh, chances are you have used Google Slides. If you haven't before, it's a pretty straightforward product. Um, before I jump uh, into the a quick demo of it. I just want to point out that we have tons of resources on the TCA Tech Notes blog that connect to uh, Google Slides as well as uh, making things with Google Slides, enhancing Google Slides, adding audio and video, finding tons of oh, using Pear Deck, Tracy Smith's great blog entry on using Pear Deck with Google Slides and lots more. There is just so much great stuff here at the TCA Tech Notes block on Google Slides that you really could spend the next uh, five or six weeks uh, doing stuff. I really like this article, uh, Five Hacks for Google Slides, because it talks about how you can enhance with pictures, use speaker notes, type with your voice, and create a hyperlink slide deck. Hey, we're going to be doing that in a little bit. Uh, and then you can also now add audio to your slides, which is just incredible. So there is just quite a bit. Google Slides is just a powerhouse of awesomeness uh, that you can take advantage of. I also want to point out that you can uh, insert icons into slides. And this is actually a Chrome add-on that you can take advantage of. So if you need ideas or pictures, you, there are tons of pictures, uh, little icons that you can enhance with uh, insert icons for Slides Chrome. There is also Icons by Noun project. And so this is uh, another uh, great source of high quality icons that you can access and use uh, in your Google Slides. One of my favorite tools for quickly capturing uh, images is the Fireshot screenshot tool. Uh, I use that and one other tool. Um, gosh, I don't remember what it's called. But the uh, Fireshot will take care of most of your needs. Now, before we go too much further, I just want to jump into Google Slides. And uh, if you go to, I like to start out in Drive. So I go to drive.google.com and then I'll navigate to my uh, special folder but for right now I'm just gonna go ahead and click new jump into Google Slides as you can see here Google Slides has some really nice uh, resources and my goal here is not to give you an overview of all of these but um, it's very easy to apply uh, templates to slides you can go to websites like Slide Carnival and uh, find tons of fantastic uh, slides that you can use um, as part of your for your presentation or for if you're creating a choice board. I'm already attracted to the Pandaras presentation template obviously um, so basically I would just click on it and then this is a medical presentation and then I can use as a Google Slides theme and so I would have this as Part of my slides. Okay, so lots of uh, resources, and if you go to the TCA Tech Notes blog, you'll find other sources. Now I can also add uh, new slides. Let me see, how do I add a new slide? I, I guess, ah, here we go. I go to slide, new slide. 
and I can use the control M combination to create multiple slides and what's really neat is that each one of these slides can have a name why would that be important now I haven't done too much here I've just sort of given them a very simple name but if I wanted to I could create sort of like a table of contents and this would be helpful because I can do some I can actually let's see link to slides in the presentation and I can go slide one and this is actually what we call um, hyperlinking your slides let's see that's slide two did I link that right? I don't know. Let's test it. Will that slide take me? Oh, that ties, took me to. This should take me to slide one. Maybe I'm not linking this right. By the way, if you're wondering how I'm doing the linking, I'm actually pressing Control K on my keyboard. But if I click on that little link uh, button on the toolbar, I can come in, remove the slide, and then actually say. Oh, there's slide one, slide two. So really my slide two is my slide one because you can see slide two over here is called slide one. I didn't stick with the name. Um, so you sort of just subtract there a little bit and I need to fix my my links again. I just remove that link and slides in the presentation and now slide three which is labeled slide two is there so you're probably asking why would I do this why would I create uh, these links well I just want to quickly show you that uh, this is a, a way to organize your slideshow presentation this is a way so that you can create sort of a table of contents uh, that your students can link to and then you can bounce around so uh, think about it this way this is the main slide the start slide and these other slides are where we're going we could put content on them we can put any kind of content we want um, I'm just going to quickly add what's a return slide let's just say go back let me change the color of that to white bold it and put it in the center now what this go back can do is um, I can sort of link link it back to slide to the first slide and apply once I have that I hopefully can copy and paste that and just drop that on every one of the slides will that work I'm not sure let's find out Again, the purpose behind this is to create an, a very simple way of navigating my entire slideshow. So the main event. Okay. So now that um, I have my main slideshow, I click on present, and you can see I have slide one, slide two, slide three, slide four. So I click on slide three and it takes me to slide three. I click on go back and it brings me back to my main screen. So what we've essentially done is created a hyperlinked slideshow. And this can be useful, especially when you're working with a choice board and you want to arrange all of your instructional materials on these slides. Now a lot of people look at a, a slideshow like this and they say, well, it's still sideways. I don't want my choice board to look like that. I want my choice board to be a eight and a half by eleven. So you can always go to file, page setup, and instead of being widescreen, you change it to custom and you go eight and a half by eleven, and that changes the orientation of your page. If you want to, you can then print these out or do whatever you'd like. Um, now one of the other things that we usually do when we're thinking about 
uh, choice boards is that we usually have some kind of uh, grid and making the grid is it can be pretty easy um, you can just draw some boxes and um, As you might imagine, this could get to be a bit of a pain, trying to get the exact dimensions right, etc. So there is a better way of doing this. Um, but I did want to quickly just give you an overview of this, because we actually have some templates that you you can use uh, when you're creating choice boards, so that you don't have to start from scratch and put all the boxes and things in the right place. But there is a benefit here. One other quick tip I want to share with you is that sometimes you don't want students to go beyond the main screen, uh, especially in a presentation. So what you can do is you can come here, select your slides, and then choose to skip them. Skip the slides, and this actually hides the slides. So if I go to present, let me go back to my main screen, if I'm pressing the right arrow key or the left arrow key, I'm not actually going anywhere. I can't go anywhere unless I use the navigation. Does that make sense? So just some quick tips on organizing a Google slide. Um, I mentioned that there were some awesome add-ons that you can use and I've already installed uh, the insert by noun project and insert icons for slides but if you're kinda curious to see what that looks like, it looks like this. So there's two different font styles that you can get, and you'll get different uh, uh, items. And you can change the color of any of these to match whatever you'd like. You can even, if you know the code, uh, type that code in. OK, let's go back here. Um, so that's just a quick overview of Google Slides. And we talked a little bit about hyperlinking Google Slides. I showed you how that works. Um, if you want to go a little bit deeper into that, you can explore um, Eric Kurtz's uh, resources. I've included those for easy access here. Uh, when you're making digital choice boards, um, there's a little bit of research behind that that sort of give you some background. But I think what it boils down to is that choice boards um, allow students choice in activities and uh, as you can see here a choice board is essentially a graphic organizer that allows students to choose how they will learn a concept it's usually a nine square grid um, each square has an activity each activity might relate to one of the multiple intelligences uh, and Nick Lefebvre has actually created a very simple choice board template where he has this broken out now each one of these hyperlinks could take you out of the choice board, out of slides, and take you to an internet based resource, but it could also take you to another slide, another hyperlink slide uh, that's available. If you want to explore some of the possibilities, Nick's done a great job of capturing uh, Nadine uh, Gilkison's uh, student choice boards, and if you just click on this image, it will actually take you to uh, Nadine's uh, choice boards. Lisa Highfill of HyperDocs fame also has uh, some great choice boards and uh, if you're wondering how to go about creating a choice board Jolie Boucher also has uh, has some uh, here that, that you can take advantage of. But you can see it, it is a very straightforward process once you have a choice board template to begin with. Now I really like this one. I, a colleague uh, shared this one. This is something that they're using for remote learning. I've changed the names and removed all credit um, to protect the innocent. But as you can see, you you have uh, they've got their week of activities. They are saying complete three activities from each subject every week. Each page has different activities to choose from, and then all activities are due by Friday of that week. So this is just one of the ways that the this choice board is being used. Looks like that's this is still under construction. Um, but what I, I liked about how they set up their choice board is they didn't necessarily follow the grid um, model. They just set it up so that you'd click on whichever one of these subjects it was so you could complete your activities. 
So you're supposed to select three activities to complete by a certain date, and here you go. Then you go back and you find another one. Isn't that amazing? So just some quick, uh, just a quick way that you can organize that. Now if you need some more suggestions, you can find those online in this Wakelet collection. Um, we actually have tons of resources uh, as a part of this, um, including all the blog entries that we have published at the TCA Tech Notes blog, including uh, some other templates that you can use. So I hope that uh, uh, this session has been helpful to you, given you some quick um, instructions on how to get started with digital choice boards and as you saw there's quite a few templates in fact I forgot to point that out uh, right here under that second grade remote learning you can click on more Google Slides choice boards templates and you'll be able to make a copy of choice board templates that have been organized in this document so uh, give it a shot check them out uh, and see what else you can create Thanks for watching uh, this uh, TCA remote learning session on digital choice boards with Google Slides.